In this video, we're going to look at the overview and the game design for my complete visual scripting course. It includes the making of two games, a platformer and an action RPG. The whole course starts completely from scratch and goes step by step until the final polished game, all without writing a single line of code. Let's begin! Alright, so the content from this video is taken from my complete visual scripting course. Let's check out the game design of the two games we're going to build, and then an overview for how we will get there. So let's see. Now the first thing to do when making a game is thinking about the design. So here's the design we're going for. This is a platformer, so we're going to have a side view. The player will have the ability to move left and right, as well as do a jump. The player will be affected by gravity and will stand on the floor and various platforms. There will be initially two types of hazards, so we're going to have some spikes, and then we're also going to have some lava. So if the player touches any of these, it will cause the player to lose, and falling off the map also causes the player to die. Later, we're also going to add another type of hazard with some moving fireballs. Then there will also be coins that the player can touch to collect, and the current amount will be shown in the UI. And the goal for each level is to reach the end and touch a star, which will send the player onto the next level. Later on, we are also going to implement some moving platforms, so they move between various points and the player can jump on top of them. Then we're also going to add a nice double jump, so if the player jumps in midair, we get a second jump. And when the player goes through all the levels, then they win the total game. So we end up with a game win scene where we can see how many coins the player picked up in all the levels. Okay, so that's our game design. It's a simple design which will allow you to learn a ton about Unity in general, and specifically about visual scripting. We're going to start completely from scratch and slowly build it up bit by bit. Okay, now let's run through a quick overview of all the steps we're going to take. We're going to start completely from scratch, so the first thing we do is create a brand new project. After opening up Unity, we will set up the layout, then install the Universal Render Pipeline and finish the project setup. Now, like I said, I specifically designed this course to include multiple games, so you can learn how to apply visual scripting to any scenario. So when we have the setup, we're going to make copies of our base project for each game. Then the first game is the platformer, and the first thing we're going to do is look into the game design. This is a very important step, so we know the actual design we're trying to implement. Then we get started on making the game. So we begin by learning the basics of visual scripting, how to create a new visual script, how to add nodes, what are inputs and outputs, and so on. Then we learn how physics works in Unity and apply gravity to our player character. After that, we make our first visual script to handle basic player movement learn about visual scripting variables and use it to define the player movement speed, then we add some jumping, and learn how to test if the player is touching the ground. Afterwards, we'll learn some more visual scripting concepts, first learn about super units and how they are extremely useful, then learn about groups and how they help you visually organize your scripts. After that, we'll learn how to work with the animator and add some animations to the player, then implement Unity Scene Machine to control the camera, and add some proper platform visuals. With all of that done, we have a nice base, so we implement the first hazard, a simple spike. If the player touches, he takes damage and dies. Then we handle scene management and reload the game when the player dies. After that, we learn another extremely important visual scripting concept, which are events. So this is the main way that you can communicate between various scripts. We then set up the UI and begin using events to show a you died message when the player dies. With the player death being handled on the spikes, we also handle the death when falling off the map. Then we add some nice coins for the player to collect, and finally add a goal to the level, which is the star. Then we handle the logic for making multiple levels and how they can be visually very different. With the second level, we make it look like the inside of a cave and add some lava using the Unity particle system. Then we implement post processing to add some nice effects, and we'll learn all about Shadograph, which is Unity's official tool for building custom shaders without writing any code. So we build a nice shader to make the lava particles glow. Then we add some sound effects and some music. We build a simple options menu with buttons to modify the sound and music volume. After that, we create a scene for when the player wins the game and display some stats. And then build up a very simple main menu. So with all that, the core of the game is done. So now it's time for the very important step of adding polish to the game. First, we add some awesome particles when the player dies and wins the level. Then some simple animations and lights to the coins. Then we improve the player script to have the sprite face in last move direction. Afterwards, we add a nice trail, then implement a simple double jump, and then add some awesome moving platforms. Lastly, we add some dangerous moving hazards. Then we do something interesting. We modify the input of our game to support touch controls. And with all of that, the game is pretty much done, so then we just build a handful of unique levels using all of our mechanics. 
And with that, the game is done. So the final game is simple, but still a pretty great platformer. It has all the mechanics that you would expect. And once again, it's all done 100% using visual scripting. So we have all of these mechanics, a fully functioning game, and there isn't a single line of code anywhere. All right, so that's the overview for the platformer. It's a simple game, which makes it perfect for learning the basics of visual scripting. And then with all the knowledge that we gain from building the platformer, we move on to the second game, the action RPG. This one is quite a bit more complex with tons of awesome features and mechanics. Let's first check out the game design that we're going to build. This is an action RPG game in a top-down perspective, meaning that we have our player sprite, but we have no concept of height or a y-axis, so there's no gravity. The player will have the ability to move left, right, up and down. Along with normal movement, we're also going to have a nice quick dash ability. Then as for weapons, the player won't be able to attack with a melee attack, and he will also have the ability to fire some arrows. The arrows have a limited number of ammo, so they won't regen over time. And for a defensive ability, the player also has a nice shield which blocks most damage. So it blocks most attacks, however we're also going to implement some fire arrows that go through the shield. Then there will be two enemy types. So we have an enemy that uses a sword, it does melee attacks, and another one which uses a bow and fires off arrows. The enemies will patrol around the map and chase the player when the player gets close. The game will also feature various hazards, so we're going to have some very basic simple spikes, we're also going to have some lava, and then in the dungeons we're going to have some cannons which shoot some fireballs. The world won't be designed and it won't be populated with all of our mechanics. So we have the main world and scattered throughout the map there will also be some portals for the player to enter into those dungeons. Then as for pickups, we're going to have some normal coins as well as some heart pickups. The coins are used in the shop in order to purchase various things. So we will have some upgrades for the maximum amount of health as well as the maximum amount of arrows. Then we're going to add a key door system where a certain key opens up a certain door and also some generic push buttons and some toggle buttons which will allow us to create some very interesting puzzles. Then the goal of the game is to collect all of the five star fragments so they are scattered throughout the world and the player must pick them up individually and when the player gets them all then we have our winner and we win the game. And then in the final polish stage we're going to add tons of effects and visuals. Okay so here we have our complete game design. As you can see, it's quite a bit more complex than the previous game, with tons of features and mechanics. But given how much you've already learned with the platformer, you should be able to build this without any issues. We begin once again with an empty project. Like with the platformer, we begin by checking out the game design we're going to implement. First we create the player character and set up some basic movement. Then we create the animator, and this time we'll learn how to use animation blend trees in order to manage animations in all directions. Then we add a sword attack with the visual and logic for identifying targets. With the player working, we then control the camera using Cinemachine, just like we did for the platformer. After that, we'll learn all about Unity Tile Map and how we can use it to build up our world. Then we add post-processing to the game. And after that, we make a really awesome health system. We make sure to build it properly so we can use it both on the player and later reuse it for the enemies. Then we set up the UI. And here we learn the value of reusing as many elements as possible, so we import the exact same options menu we made in the platformer, along with the sound and music scripts. Then we add some basic spikes, and then handle player death and reloading the scene. With all that done, it's time to add some enemies. First we'll build up the structure of the enemy with the visual and the animations. Then it's time to learn about yet another very important visual scripting feature, which are state machines. We use them to handle our enemy AI. First make a patrolling state where the enemy patrols between various waypoints. Then we handle the state where the enemy chases and attacks the player. After that we add the health system to the player. Then with the player taking damage we add a defensive ability, a nice block. With all that done we add some pickups. So first some simple coins and then a health pickup. Afterwards we learn how to handle another very important thing with visual scripting. We're going to learn how we can fire events and get a return value. Then we add a nice evasive dash. And we add another weapon in the form of projectile arrows. Then we take those arrows and make an archer enemy. We build an enemy manager script that can spawn multiple enemies and use that to make some interesting battles. Then we make some keys and doors to build up a key door system. And after that it's time to finally build some dungeons. We make them look visually very different. Then we make a script that can spawn some coins and make a chest object that spawns coins when hit. After that we build up a cannon that shoots fireballs and make a nice lava hazard with a great visual. Later we make some special unblockable arrows for the enemies and create some pickups to increase max health and the max arrow count. 
Using all that we have learned, we then implement some shops. So we need to pay a certain gold amount to open the door and get to the item. Then we make some interactive buttons that we can use for all sorts of scenarios, like opening doors or building puzzles. And then we add the main goal for the game, which is to gather all five star fragments. With all of that, the core of the game is done. So we add a simple game win scene along with a simple main menu. And then as usual, when the core is done, we get to work on the polish. First, we make a shader to add some tint to the enemies when they take some damage. Then we add an awesome dissolve effect when the enemies are spawned. And then we add some animations to coins and various pickups. Of course, no action RPG is complete without smashing some pots, so we add that. Then we implement the trail render on the arrows. With all that done, we take some time to use the tile map to build up our whole world. We add a trail on the dash and force the player to stop moving while attacking. Then add a nice glow to the star fragments and improve the lava shader to look quite a bit better. After that, we polish the fireball so they don't vanish instantly, learn how to add camera shake to sin machine, set up the player to respawn when dead, add a really nice sword slash animation, along with some grass bushes that I have a special shader to sway with the wind. Then we take everything we have built and populate the whole world with all of our mechanics. And with all of that, we have the awesome action RPG done. We take a look at the final game we have built, which has tons and tons of features. And again, we built all of this entirely using visual scripting without a single line of code. All of those mechanics, the player, the enemies, the pickups, the dungeons, and so on, everything done purely with visual scripting. So it's a really awesome game with tons and tons of features. All right, so that's the game design and overview of the whole course. I'm really happy with how it came out, and based on the reviews, it seems people are really enjoying and learning a ton. The course features multiple games, all made completely using Unity Visual Scripting without a single line of code. Each game starts completely from scratch, and the lectures are presented as clear step-by-step -step tutorials, just like my normal videos. I specifically designed it to include multiple games so you can learn how to apply visual scripting to any genre you can think of. With the knowledge you will learn from this course, you will then be able to make any game you want. All the lectures have their project files included, and I'm always available in the Q&A section to help with whatever questions you have. So if you're looking for a guided step-by-step -step course on learning how to make awesome games with visual scripting, then check the link in the description to pick up the course. Alright, so thanks for watching, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.